Today we're going to dive into some of the science behind the different episodes that you saw on TV. Essentially in episode two, Adamic and Sue, while running, we noticed a mistake that he was making. His toe was down. We're going to show you a number of different things that you can try to adjust in your running technique to improve your velocity and your speed. I got a big Dan Moses with me. He's going to take us through some drills. I'm going to walk you through step by step and try and coach you on the different movements that you can make adjustments in to improve your speed technique and attain a greater level of velocity. First, we're going to talk about the ankle. If the toe is down while the foot is in the air, we create a decelerator in the ankle joint. In other words, the front side of the shin or the tibialis anterior, or the anterior tibialis, will decelerate the ankle joint on impact. The goal has to be to keep the toe up when the foot is in the air so that we can engage a stretch reflex for the gastroc or calf to enable it to propel us forward and generate power instead of resisting ourselves with our own muscles. Ideally, when Dan is running, if the knee comes off the ground, the toe is up. If he puts his toe down to the ground, the first thing he will do is decelerate at the ankle joint, slowing himself down, then engage the calf to propel himself forward and push. Ideally, when the foot is in the air, the toe is up, the ankle is locked. Now when he contacts the ground, he can place it into the ground, push, and generate force with the calf immediately. The other thing this enables us to do is our muscle is elastic in principle like a rubber band. If the toe is up, it puts the actual calf or gas rock in a position where it places it under a hard stretch. That elastic nature stores energy, which is converted to kinetic energy, helping us propel forward at a higher velocity. Two other factors that are common mistakes when we're looking at running technique are the position of the hips and the angle of the shin. Wherever the shin is pointing, we will propel our force. If the hips are dropped, we will lose our force production. We're going to start looking at the shin angle. The shin should always be 45 degrees to the ground in a drive phase, which is the acceleration phase of initiation of a sprint. Ideally, that allows us to be 45 degrees from the ground, taking advantage of the gravitational pull and our biomechanical effectiveness to generate force in a horizontal motion. If gravity is towing us, it becomes an assister instead of a resistor. When we look at Dan, his shin angle, or where it's placed on the ground, should be approximately 45 degrees to the ground in angle. That allows him to engage and drive his musculature into the ground, creating a great force production from the quadriceps and hips, as well as down in the ankle of the gastroc, to propel him forward. If he is upright, gravity is now pulling him downward and no longer helping him move forward. If his shin points vertical, stand for a second. If his shin points vertical, all of his force will go vertical. If his shin points horizontal, all of his force will go horizontal, propelling him downfield. A lot of times you hear people say, lengthen your stride. So what you see are kids reaching out for ground. This leg becomes a decelerator. We call this a breaking force, just like the toe being down. I can't use this leg. I have to decelerate to get the position to utilize it to accelerate again. Ideally, the foot should always contact under and behind the body in a drive phase to generate as much force as possible and utilize gravitational pull to propel us forward. It also puts our muscles in the perfect biomechanical position to exert the optimal force horizontally. The next item we need to look at are the hips. The hips should always be forward and engaged. This allows us to utilize the glutes, which are a large muscle group, or your butt to propel you forward and generate force. If Dan breaks at the waist when he's running, now his range of motion is shortened. When he brings his knee up, he cannot bring it up to a full range of motion. He also can't optimize his power because he cannot use the glute to generate force. If his hips are up, when he lifts the knee, he has a greater range of motion and a greater power on the downward force. Remember, he should still be at 45 degrees to the ground with his shin, which holds the rest of his body at 45 degrees to the ground as well to have optimal drive phase force. So when he's in this position here, his knee comes up, he extends back, he drives through. He can engage the glute, squeeze the butt, and drive through. If Dan loses his hips and lets them go posterior, now the foot will come down vertical. The shin is vertical, it's going to throw him up. He cannot utilize the glutes to get power, and his forces dissipate vertically instead of horizontally. So three of the many factors that are associated with effective running are the toe should be up when the foot
what is in the air. They don't do. So that we can utilize the gas rock and reduce the resistance of the tibialis anterior on the front side on ground contact. Number two, when we look at the movement, the shin angle should be at 45 degrees to the ground to optimize his force production and the use of gravitational pull. Number three, his hips should be engaged, not pushed posterior, so that he loses his glutes in this position and has a vertical step dissipating his force vertical. He now can engage the glute, a large muscle group, generate optimal power, create the optimal range of motion and optimal speed production. These are three minor details which create major impacts in your speed performance. We'll again be doing more videos to educate and coach you guys, but on our website, under the store, barwithmethods.com in our store, you can find our speed mechanics video, which will teach you a number of drills and mechanics that you can utilize to improve not only these three things, but many other positions, biomechanical positions, that can ensure your effectiveness when you're running. The other thing we can do, we offer certifications. If you're willing to come up and take the time to take a certification, an eight-hour course, we can educate you on proper running technique as well as proper coaching technique to make yourself and the athletes you work with as effective as possible.